Okay, so you've been using Ableton for a little while. You've managed to create some parts and sort of play around with ideas. You might have even been using it for a while and you're proficient in producing music in, inside the software itself, but you've just decided that you want to go out there and get involved in the hardware revolution or re-revolution that's happening right now. Uh, people are realizing the benefits and the fun involved in getting hold of actual hardware boxes that you can get your hands on and do stuff. So let's say you've just been to the shop you've bought yourself something like this. This is the Korg Volca Beats. It's a really lovely little drum machine, super cheap for what you get. It's got some really nice little analog circuits in there that create some really lovely sounds. You can play it straight out the shop with the little speaker built in, but you wanna know how to get this to work with the stuff that you've already gotten inside in live. Now, in order to do that, you're gonna need a couple of things. The first thing you're going to need is an audio MIDI interface. Now, the one that I'm using today is the one that I use for my live performance. It's called a TC Electronic Connect Live. Um, but it doesn't really matter what it is, providing that it has two things. It has audio inputs and outputs. That goes without saying. But it also has MIDI in and out. Now, the input isn't quite so important, but you definitely need to have a MIDI out. Because MIDI out is the way that you're going to send information to that external box, whether it's the drum machine or a synthesizer, um, in order to make it make sounds when you tell it to. So I'm just going to show you quickly how we connect all this together. Now this um, audio interface is actually a FireWire interface, so that connects with a FireWire cable. You might find that you've got a USB audio interface, they're quite common, and that will obviously connect using a USB cable. But for now I'm just going to lay this FireWire cable out, plug it in to my Mac here. Okay. Now, because this is bus powered, immediately once I've plugged it in, I can see there's some power on the front there, so this is powered up. The next thing I need to do is I need to get my little box here, and I need to plug it in. Now, there's a couple of important um, points here. This device only has a MIDI in, so it can only receive information. It can't send information as MIDI. But it does have an audio out, obviously. It outputs sound. So what we want to do is send no information, from Ableton into this box and we want to get audio back out but we want all that to happen inside the live environment so we can combine it with our other work. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a MIDI cable. This is a standard five pin MIDI cable and we've got the MIDI is going to go from the output here on the audio MIDI device. Just going to plug that into the output and the other end is going to go surprisingly into our input on this device. Okay, so that's what's going to send the information. So when I tell the computer, I tell Ableton Live to play kick drums, it's going to send that message, play kick drums, to the box here, and then it's going to play those kick drums. Now the next thing I need to do is get the audio back from this box into Ableton again. And in order to do that, I need an audio lead. Uh, it will change depending on what the device is, but this one's got a mini jack output. So I'm going to need a mini jack lead that takes the output from the device and the inputs on my audio interface are larger, larger mono jacks so that's what I need on the other end in this case and those I'm going to plug into my line in one and two on the back of my audio MIDI interface now the last piece of this puzzle is power for the little device here now some things will run on batteries this one will but I don't have any batteries so I'm just going to plug this in underneath the table here Okay, now I should be able to turn the drum machine on. So I've got power here, got power here, and I've got my computer on. Now Ableton isn't loaded at the moment. There's a reason for that. It's best to get all of your devices plugged in before you boot live up, because that helps live to recognize all the devices, even though it should do anyway. It's just one of those ways of reducing the possibility of things not quite working out. So once I'm plugged in, I'm gonna go into Ableton Live, and open it up and I'm going to open a new set. So we're working from exactly the building blocks that you would find when you open a new project at home. Now, the first thing I need to do once I've opened this project is go into the preferences. So that's control comma or command and comma, or you can obviously access it via the drop downs. And I need to go to the audio tab first and foremost so that I can make sure that my audio input and output device is the one that I'm using here, okay? Now, it's already chosen the TC near audio in and out. If it wasn't the correct device, I'd simply select it from the drop-down box here. 
I've got a bunch of different things on here because the computer thinks it's got lots of different sound interfaces. But I select the TC device from the input and output. I might then also need to go into the input configuration or the output configuration and activate the inputs and outputs that I'm using. Now, in this case, I'm going to actually just quickly connect the outputs because I have some outputs here that are going to our recording device. I'm going to put those in. So that's our output. But I'm using the inputs 1 and 2 and the outputs 1 and 2. So I need to be sure in the input and output configuration that 1 and 2 are active. And that's simply a case of opening it up and checking that it's yellow. If it's not yellow, i.e. if it's greyed out, then you just need to click on it to activate it. Once the ins and outs are activated, what I then need to do is go back into, uh, close the preferences, go back into the set. And what I should be able to do then, if I've got my input and output routing section visible, if I haven't, I'll need to go to the right centre of the screen here to the I.O. tab and activate that so that I can see the in and out. And if I start tapping on the notes on the Volker Beats here, I'll start seeing VU meters lighting up in the input section. Okay, so this is an audio track, and when I click on the drop-down dialog beneath the external input, I can see all the various inputs, and I can see if there's a signal coming in. Now, at this stage, all I want to do is just see if there's a signal, just to be sure that everything's plugged in correctly, and there is. Now, what I could do is simply activate the monitor in here, and that will enable me to hear what's actually coming through the track. As I tap that, you can hear what's coming through. But I don't really want to do that. I don't really want to use the internal sequencer here to play beats and just have them come through. What I want is to be able to send specific drum programs to this machine. So that would be using MIDI. And I want to get the audio back and have it performed inside my, uh, my live set here so that I can apply audio effects and mix that particular sound. So instead of working on an audio track, we're going to work on a MIDI track. And we're going to make use of Ableton's external instrument device. Now this is kind of the key to incorporating any external uh, devices, whether they're instruments or effects, into your live set. Now you'll find the external instrument device in the instrument section, and here you can see external instrument. Now I'm going to drag an instance of this external instrument onto MIDI track 1. And you'll see the device appear here in the clip view at the bottom. Okay. Now the external instrument device is a very simple set of parameters to set up. The first thing you have to decide is where the MIDI is going to. So this is a MIDI track. I will have MIDI notes on that track playing back. But where am I going to send that to? Now I want to send it to this particular drum machine. Now the settings inside the external instrument device are pretty simple. All, we were, all we're doing is sending MIDI to a particular device and getting the audio to come back within this one device here. And you can see that that's what's happening because on the left of the device, we've got a MIDI bar indicator, and on the right, we've got an audio VU meter. So we know that this device is in some way converting MIDI data into audio. And it's doing that by sending the MIDI to this box and collecting the audio back and feeding it into the device here. So what I need to do from the drop-down box here is select um, select the MIDI device that I want to use. Now, I've gone to Configure, which has opened up the preferences, and I just need to make sure that I activate the tracks for the device that is in question, okay, which is actually the audio MIDI device here. So the TC near, you can see, has shown up in the preferences, and I just need to turn the track activation on, and that will enable it to send and receive uh, information from the tracks to whatever else is connected. I can now close the preferences, and if I go back down to the drop-down menus here, I can see the TC Neo sound card has appeared. And then underneath that, it's given me the selection of 16 MIDI channels. Now, 16 MIDI channels, that's the most amount of channels you can transmit on one MIDI cable. And typically what happens is that external devices have a MIDI channel assigned to them, and that just helps to identify them when you've got more than one. Now, if you've just bought um, a synthesizer or a drum machine, it's worth having a quick flick through the manual to find out either if it's a predetermined MIDI channel that it's been fixed to as default, or whether there's some way of changing the MIDI channel. Now, I happen to know for the Korg Volker Beats that the MIDI channel it operates on is 10. So what I'm going to do is select channel 10. Again, if you don't know the MIDI channel, you're going to have to basically read the manual. Okay? So I'm going to send MIDI information from this track to MIDI channel 10 out of this cable. It's going to go into the box here. So in theory now, I should be able to send notes to this box. 
The next thing I'm going to do is select where the audio is going to come back from. And I already know from looking at my inputs and outputs that the audio is coming back in through audio one and two. We also know that because that's where we plugged it in. So I'm going to select one and two. Okay. Now that's sending MIDI two here and collecting audio from it. And what should happen now if I enable my MIDI keyboard, which is in the top right hand corner here, and I also enable either my record arm or I select um, my MIDI, my monitor in button here. I'm just going to use the record arm. I should be able to play notes here. And if I'm really lucky and I find the correct notes, yeah, I can find the specific sounds on the, on the Korg Volker. So I can trigger the sounds from the MIDI keyboard here. There's the kick drum, snare, and other sounds. What that now enables me to do is to create MIDI patterns within this MIDI track that will trigger the drum machine itself. Now, what I'm going to do here is just have a look at the uh, piano roll in the MIDI clip, see if I can identify. Look, I can see down here at C1. I can see that's where my kick drum is. So if I want to start drawing in some notes, I can draw in some kick drum notes like this. And as soon as I play this clip now, I'm going to start hearing that kick drum. Okay, and that's pretty much the whole journey. Obviously, there's a little bit of faffing around, figuring out exactly which notes correlate to which sounds in the machine here. But once that's running, I'm now using this external instrument device as kind of like any other software plugin. Only at the end of it, instead of a piece of software, we've got a real piece of hardware. And that enables us to do other things such as adjusting the parameters, the tonality, the sounds actually within the box here. So you can get much more hands-on with the sounds, but still maintain program material from within your set. And that should enable you to sequence more interesting stuff and to have signals coming out of the actual, out of the software into real hardware and get the audio back in. So you can then apply things like mixing processes. So I can turn volumes up and down within live. I can also do things like add reverbs, delays, and of course, any bunch or selection of all the other plugins that are available, both natively and third party. Okay, I hope that pretty much um, explains how to connect a basic device. And the next thing I'm going to show you is my full live setup, which is a number of different devices, but they're all working under the same basic principle. I'm sending mess messages out as note information, getting audio back in, and then using Ableton Live's various effects and mixing engine to blend those parts together to create a performance.